we shouldn't have to tell you that Wrath Classic is going to be huge. On September 26th, all of your friends will be waiting patiently to log in, while the servers over at Blizzard will be doing more work than their entire development team during Shadowlands Season 4. In any case, you'll be wanting to hop on the hype train while you can, and today, we will be telling you about the best specs to main for Wrath of the Lich King PvP, some of which may come as a complete surprise. And as a quick disclaimer, this list has been compiled strictly off the Deadly Season 5 Arena meta. You're also in the right place, as this list has been produced alongside a collection of the best and most experienced Wrath of the Lich King Arena players, and it's those same players who've spent a ton of time creating by far the best way for you to get an insane head start on the competition, with our epic class guides for our brand new Wrath of the Lich King site over at Skillcap. And trust us, you're going to need it, as you may think you're ready for Classic, but Wrath PvP is a totally different game, with probably more skill expression than any other time in World of Warcraft. So you're definitely going to want all the best tricks that only the number one players use to climb the ranks, which comes with the 400 rating increase guarantee we've just launched. Check us out after this to access both Retail and Wrath Guides in one subscription with the exclusive discount linked below. So without any further ado, let's kick things off by taking a look at our top 3 melee contenders. Arms Warriors is our first, and if you enjoy pure, unadulterated aggression and damage, then look no further. This iteration of Arms is about as close as you can get to the standard MMO Warrior archetype, which means what you should expect is a primary focus on both incredibly high sustained damage, but also very strong burst. If you're able to hit your target, then chances are they won't be able to survive for too long, especially thanks to their trademark ability, Mortal Strike, which in Wrath provides a 50% healing reduction, which can be kept up on a target in Definitely. Oh, and if that wasn't enough already, then let me introduce you to Unrelenting Assault. This talent causes your overpower to reduce the target's magic damage and healing by 50% if it lands during a cast. So in total, you can stick a very overpowered 75% healing reduction on your target if they make the mistake of casting. This doesn't even take into consideration that their consistent damage actually hurts. One of the major differences in Wrath is that the abilities that you have on your bars actually deal impactful damage, and if you're able to have high uptime on a target, it means they won't survive for long. Coming from a TBC standpoint, warriors get a ton of their main issues fixed, the biggest of which being the addition of the talent Juggernaut, which now enables the use of charge in combat, which when paired up and rotated with intercept helps to solve those very painful situations where you just can't connect to your target. Oh, and we haven't even mentioned Bladestorm yet. When I read it, I, you know, I just went, this is it, this is exactly Bladestorm not only gives you some additional mobility from the snare and root break, but also immunity to any further crowd control that isn't disarm. And of course, yes, it also does ridiculous levels of damage, especially when combined with recklessness. Aside from their damage, Arms Warriors are also strong defensively. Armor values actually mean something in Wrath, and as a result, Warriors are naturally durable due to being a plate wearer, while also having the option to swap to defensive stance and put on a shield when required. Then combine this with abilities like Enraged Regeneration, Shield Wall, and even Shield Block, Warriors are one of the most naturally durable melee. It's all of this which makes Arms Warriors the hands down most dominant melee in Wrath, and it's not just only for Season 5 that this is the case. Arms progressively get stronger as the arena seasons progress, scaling incredibly well with higher item levels of gear to simultaneously achieve both higher levels of durability and damage. As a result of being such a dominant spec, it means you can slot into almost any composition in any bracket. Inside of 2v2, nothing comes close to the strength of Warrior Holy Paladin, which remains the stable melee healer composition throughout Wrath's entirety. Even then though, you can very easily play with any healer. For 3v3, you can play varying comp archetypes, most notably being cleaves like TSG or Turbo or melee caster comps like Thundercleave. Our next spec to main is one you may have some pre-built misconceptions about, and that's Subtlety Rogue. It's often wrongly thrown around that sub-rogues fall off massively in Wrath. Compared to TBC, they are noticeably weaker, but undeniably remain to be one of the most dominant melee. Sub has a very drastic shift in playstyle from TBC, mainly because you can no longer play like a warrior and go toe to toe with any melee auto attacking, spamming hemorrhage, and doing unhealable damage. Instead, going into Wrath, Subtlety focuses purely on setup and burst damage, a lot like what you would expect coming from a retail standpoint. This means adapting a hit and run type playstyle where you'll lock down your target with stuns, burst them, and then look to go for a re-stealth or to avoid damage until you can initiate a setup again. Going into Wrath, Subtlety gets some very important 
important new additions to complement its newfound control-based playstyle. Most notably is Shadow Dance, which now gives you a way to access your stealth abilities like Ambush, Garrett, or Cheap Shot outside of just Re-Stealths or Vanish. This is on top of Tricks of the Trade, which gives you and a party member of your choosing an additional 15% damage during your setups. In general though, when you have a crowd control kit that's longer than most grocery lists, it's very easy to see why Rogue is so strong, and on top of having Gouge, Blind, Sap, and Garrett. Something which remains from TBC is that Kidney Shot and Cheap Shot continue to not share diminishing returns with each other, so it's fair to say you're able to keep targets locked down for very long periods. Damage-wise, Subtlety is able to pump out unrivaled burst damage during their setups, primarily coming from Ambush, so it makes having Shadow Dance, Vanish, or the ability to re-stealth integral to its win condition. Builders like Backstab still do more damage than you would expect from a retail standpoint, but for the most part, it's all about Eviscerate and Ambush. This damage is then changed drastically based on your target's armor class, which means you can near one-shot cloth classes, but do substantially less damage on plate. Poisons are also now slightly changed from TBC, with Wound remaining a 50% mortal strike, but now only having a single stack rather than the 5 stacks of 10%. This can be seen either as a buff or nerf depending on the matchup and situation. As a whole, Subtlety is extremely cooldown dependent and demands and requires a baseline level of skill and coordination in order to pilot the spec, not only for its damage like we just mentioned, but also for its survivability. As a melee in leather armor, trading blow for blow with most specs is a surefire way to lose the game, so optimal use of strong defensives like Cloak of Shadows, Evasion, and even Vanish to some extent are required to survive. It's also worth shining a light on Preparation, which as you can see resets the cooldown on your Evasion, Sprint, Vanish, Cold Blood, and even Shadow Step, so you have a cooldown to reset your cooldowns. Despite their relatively high skill cap, Subtlety Rogue is at their strongest inside of Season 5, so if you enjoy a more setup and thought driven playstyle, it's the best time to pick one up and learn. Even then, as the seasons progress, Subtlety will still remain to be top tier and can look to counteract damage reductions with increased levels of armor pen, but will slightly taper off with the release of Ice Crown Citadel and the rise in popularity of Shadow Morn Cleaves, but that's a long ways away. The one drawback of Subtlety is their lack of comp diversity, and you're very limited with your partner choice. With that in mind though, the comps that you fit into are all very strong. For 2v2, you can play double DPS compositions like Rogue Mage, Double Rogue, or even Rogue Ret, or with a Disciplined Priest if you prefer playing with healers. Then inside of 3v3, no surprises, it's all about RMP, but comps like RLP or RLS or even Double Rogue Healer could potentially make strong showings. Our third and final best melee domain for Season 5 is of course Unholy Death Knight. I mean, come on, it's the first hero class of WoW's existence, of course it's good. Unholy DKs have what can only be described as the highest sustained damage output of any class or spec. Essentially, at their core, they are a melee version of an Affliction Warlock, as most of your damage comes from your two diseases, Frost Fever and Blood Plague, which are applied from your standard rotation and then spread to everybody in range with Pestilence. On top of this dot damage, you've also then got a consistent onslaught of DPS coming from your pet ghoul, on top of Scourge Strikes and Death Coils, which greatly take a toll on healers' mana bars. A Death Knight's main damage cooldown is Gargoyle, which is honestly god tier and will just straight up kill enemies in seconds if they remain in its line of sight, especially if you have a Bloodlust on your team. Aside from just damage output, DKs excel at, well, for lack of a better description, just being annoying? Chains of Ice is the main culprit, which in Wrath is a 95% slow that then tapers off. Desecration is another talent you'll very quickly learn to either love if you're using it or hate if you're playing against it, which causes your standard rotation to also just apply a 50% AoE snare effect, which then lingers on the ground for 20 seconds, giving you that ever so fond memory of your rogues failing in the Black Wing Lair suppression room. And if you ever get bored of running at 5% movement speed and decide to take the time to stop to cast an ability, Unholy Death Knight is the king of micro crowd control. Having the ability to mind freeze one cast, death grip the next, gnaw the one after, and then hit you with a 5 second strangulate that you can't even trinket out of. Defensively, Unholy is very adept at dealing with magic damage thanks to the relatively low cooldown self-defensive of anti-magic shell, and the AoE version anti-magic zone which can also be used to assist your team. Against melee though, it's going to be a combination of Icebound Fortitude, Deathstrike Healing, and swapping to Frost Presence in order to survive, alongside maximizing your slows to kite and reduce your damage intake. 
Season 5 is where Unholy Death Knights will be at their peak, but will inevitably get slightly weaker in the later seasons, down to additions like Bauble of True Blood, which indirectly counter strangulate, and even Solace, which causes healers to oom a lot slower, removing one of Death Knight's major win conditions in the case of 2v2. Regardless, Death Knights still thrive in Wrath as a whole, and as such have a ton of different comp options. For 2v2, you can pair up with either a Paladin, Priest, or Druid healer to make one of the strongest healer melee variations. But 3v3 is where Death Knight truly shines, specifically in cleaves like TSG, DK Enhance, or DK Hunter, where the combination of Strangulate and Gargoyle combined with your partner's damage makes short work of most healers. That being said though, you still have the option to play with casters like Elemental Shaman or Affliction Warlock. Moving on from Melee, up next we have our three caster specs, starting off with the strongest of the bunch, Elemental Shaman. Ellie Shaman's In Wrath of the Lich King is shockingly strong, and without a doubt takes the title of best overall ranged. If you're coming from TBC, it's fair to say you might be shocked by this fact. Elemental is all about one thing in specific, and that's its burst damage, and the reason for their rise in strength is the addition of Lava Burst. As a whole, every damaging ability you have just hits very hard, it's as simple as that. So your Lava Burst, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, and even your Shocks all deal impactful damage. And for even larger surges in burst damage, Elemental also has passives like Lightning Overload, which gives your Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning a chance to cast an additional time for half the damage. But what amps this even further is the cooldown Elemental Mastery, which acts as an improved version of Nature's Swiftness, providing you with an outlet to get out an instant Chain Lightning, Lava Burst, or Lightning Bolt alongside 15% haste for 15 seconds. A popular combo and something to look out for is to cast a Lava Burst into an instant Lightning Bolt followed with a Chain Lightning. And lastly, all we need to say is Bloodlust. <laughs> Their burst damage isn't all that makes Elemental strong though, and they thrive in many other departments. Defensively, they're among the best, with the ability to jump into Ghost Wolf and Kite as a way to avoid damage and build themselves distance. And thanks to the talent Astral Shift, if you want to lock an Elemental down, they're going to be taking 30% less damage during stuns, fears, and silences. Utility is also another aspect that makes Ellie Shaman's god tier. Wind shears off the GCD and locks targets out for 2 seconds with only a 6 second cooldown, which can even be talented to 5. Then if that's not enough, you've got Grounding Totem which has only a 15 second CD. And another new addition is Thunderstorm, providing you with a knockback that can be used in so many different ways, especially when you you consider that maps like Dalaran Sewers and Blade's Edge have no additional ways to get to the upper tiers. Oh, and probably more overpowered than all of the above is Earthbind Totem, and combined with the Storm, Earth, and Fire talent, turns it into a 5 second route alongside the additional slow. Sounds strong, right? Well, this is only two examples of the utility shamans can provide with their totems, and there are still things like Tremor Totem, Resist Totems, Combat Enhancing Totems, the list goes on. Overall, Elemental is a true hybrid in his playstyle, and you're going to be purging, off-healing, using your utility, and looking to disrupt enemies while trying to constantly build distance and create opportunities for yourself to cast and set up kills. So if that interests you, there really isn't a better option in terms of strength. Inside of Season 5, Elemental is incredibly strong, and then will also gradually improve in strength throughout the later seasons with the additions of added spell power, haste, and MP5 to combat mana issues. As the predominant caster inside of Wrath, playing Ellie opens up a lot of comp options. Inside of 2v2, Elemental is very competitive, having the option to play with both a healer or double DPS, with the highlights being Elemental Holy Paladin, Ellie Destro, Ellie Mage, or even Ellie Disc. This variation also applies to 3v3, where you can slot into almost any composition, with the strongest being Thundercleave. But LSD, Ellie Mage, and even Ellie DK are all very strong. Our second range recommendation is a spec quite similar to Elemental in a sense, but instead of the additional utility provides much more in terms of offense. I'm of course talking about Destruction Warlock. Now if you played Retail or at least follow it, a good comparison for Wrath Destro would be very similar to Shadowlands Destro, but with one major difference. In Retail, in order to deal impactful damage, you'll always need Dark Soul active, while in Wrath, you've always got Kill Pressure as your Chaos Bolt and other abilities hit hard all the time, which basically sums up the spec as a whole. You have a ton of hard hitting spells like Chaos Bolt, Incinerate, Conflag, and Shadow Burn. Free casting, you'll be able to score a kill with your eyes closed, but when shut down and trained, the challenge is creating opportunities to cast and combo your spells to land the win. This is done with the help of abilities like Death Coil and Shadow Fury, which both provide you with enough time to cast a Chaos Bolt, but can also be achieved by creating distance or dealing with interrupts. 
Shadow Fury is Destro's most important ability as it's both on a shorter GCD and instant cast as well as being AoE and even doing good damage. Chaos Bolt as a spell is a much shorter cast in Wrath and also has the benefit of going through absorbs like Power Word Shield and cannot be resisted. Immolate is centric to the spec, not only for bolstering your damage, but also enabling the use of Conflag, which in turn grants you back draft procs. Competent players with a magic dispel won't allow you to easily get Immolate's active and cast damage, so despite doing a ton of damage and being able to one-shot, there is still a high level of both setup and complexity involved. Going from TBC, defensively, Destro relies heavily on two new additions in order to survive. These being Shadow Flame, when combined with a Glyph for 70% slow, allowing you to kite, and then Demonic Circle, which allows you to put down a portal and then teleport back to it. This gains even more value in Wrath, as both Blades Edge and Dalaran Sewers have much longer routes to get back up to the high ground. Against melee, you are still slightly more durable than the average caster thanks to Soul Link and the option to swap to Demon Armor, but even then it's by no means enough to just remain stationary and tank melee, and like mentioned, you'll be required to kite in order to both survive and get out damage. You still however bring a certain level of utility and control on destruction, with the ability to dispel both magic effects on yourself, your team members, and even purge your enemies with devour magic from your fell hunter. This is combined with curses like elements to bolster damage, or tongues to reduce your enemy's casting speed. And of course, a warlock's most iconic ability, fear for both peeling and CC. So if you like to see big numbers but still want a certain level of setup involved, look no further than destruction warlock. In terms of strength, season five Destro is the only real contender to Elemental Shaman, starting off strong and then only rising in strength throughout the seasons as both resilience and haste levels rise. Destruction has seen a decent selection of compositions available throughout Wrath, both in 2v2 and 3v3. For twos, Destruction can adapt its playstyle and pick up a succubus in certain matchups in order to play with either a Holy Paladin, Restoration Druid, or even Restoration Shaman, or even venture into double DPS compositions with an Elemental Shaman or Mage. In 3v3, they have just a strong of a showing, having compositions like LSP or LSD, Destro Mage, or even Rogue Lock. Our final ranged pick is something you might not expect, as the most obvious choice here would usually be Mage. But hear us out, we're not crazy. For our third ranged recommendation, we suggest Beast Mastery Hunter. We've mentioned this a few times already, but in Season 5, both health pools and resilience levels are at their lowest. This makes for both explosive and short games, and this is exactly where Beast Mastery thrives. We're already seeing this demonstrated on the beta where hunters run in, intimidation stun their target, pop all offensive cooldowns, and then just end games with overwhelming pressure. Just in general though, hunters as a whole absolutely destroy low armored and low resilience targets more than any other spec in the game. Beast Mastery does this especially well, as it's incredibly hard to shut down due to bestial wrath, combined with the beast within, making both you and your pet immune to crowd control. This can then be combined with the ridiculously strong cooldown of rapid fire, and as over 75% of your damage comes from an uncontrollable pet, it's impossible for a lot of compositions to deal with unless they have immunities. Combine this with the huge damage coming from the newly acquired instant aimed shot and its 50% healing reduction results in BM Hunters being an absolute beast in the earlier seasons. Defensively, however, you're not the strongest and rely mostly on your deterrence, Roar of Sacrifice, and Master's Call, Freedom Kiting in order to survive. But really, with how BM plays, you're not looking for those extended duration games. Another factor to consider is that in terms of skill floor, there isn't any spec better for just picking up and jumping into arena and doing well on. So if you're looking for a spec to test the waters of Wrath Arena, then it doesn't get much better than this. Beast Mastery is definitely at the peak of its strength in Season 5, and does gradually fall off in later seasons, but even then remains more than viable. If you're worried about its viability in later seasons, you can always look to respec to marksmanship and be just as competitive. Comp-wise, you're quite limited, but your main composition is both very strong and explosive to play, and of course we're talking about Beast Cleave, which means pairing up with an Enhancement Shaman who provides both you and your pet with Bloodlust. You can also alternatively play with an Unholy Death Knight to equal levels of success. And for 2v2, it's all about double DPS comps, with both BM Enhance and BM DK both being very competitive options. We started with Melee and with Beast Mastery, that wraps up our three range suggestions. Last but not least, let's now take a look at what we recommend for our three best healers. 
Starting off, we've got the undisputed healing kings of Wrath Arena, Holy Paladin. Holy Paladins are considered the pinnacle of Wrath healing, and for very good reasons. Throughput-wise, Paladin not only has incredibly potent healing, but the majority of it is instant, which is a crazy concept in itself if you're coming from TBC, where they had nothing but casted heals. Holy Shock, which gets drastically buffed to now be a 6 second cooldown, and the new addition of Sacred Shield make up for a lot of your instant healing. Holy Shock crits then also grant you Infusion of Light, which reduces the cast time of your next flash of light by 1.5 seconds, which makes it instant. Also when healing your Sacred Shield target, you'll add all of that healing on top as a healing over time effect. And when they actually need to cast, Holy Paladins also have efficient heals in both Flash of Light and Holy Light. And if that wasn't enough to top it all off, thanks to Beacon of Light, all of your heals even get duplicated to a second target. Something you may not be aware of, especially coming from a retail background, is that not every healer can dispel magic effects on their teammates. And in Wrath, it's only priests and paladins that have a magic dispel. Paladins, however, have the strongest dispel in the game, as not only does it remove one poison, one magic, and one diseases with every press, but it also has a chance to give the target added resistance to further spells with Sacred Cleansing. Sound good? Well, we're yet to even get to the strongest part of Holy Paladins yet, which is their cooldowns. Holy Paladins have all the standard blessings, or as they're called in Wrath, hands, so sacrifice, freedom, and protection. This means the ability to give your team immunity to slows, immunity to physical damage, or even make yourself immune to crowd control with sacrifice, which is on top of divine sacrifice to then further reduce damage and make you immune to crowd control for even longer. They also have Avenging Wrath to bolster healing throughput, and of course Divine Shield as an immunity. This is almost comedic level if you compare it to the other healers who at the most have maybe one or two defensive cooldowns. And even just something as simple as the fact they have plate armor and a shield which as a result makes them the most durable healer versus any cleave and simultaneously makes them a must have healer in most cleave comps as playing with any other than a paladin will result in an uphill battle in these mirrors. With this in mind they are by no means exclusive to cleaves as paladins can quite honestly play any composition in the game and it's only in a select few comps that they get outclassed by other healers. Even when playing with casters, you can't underestimate the power of tools like Concentration Aura and Aura Mastery. If it wasn't clear already, Holy Paladin in Season 5 is the best healer, and will remain to be so for the entirety of Wrath while only growing in strength. Like we mentioned for compositions, the world is your oyster. 2v2, you can play with either a warrior or death knight, and in 3v3, you can fit into any archetype, including cleaves like TSG, Turbo, or Beast Cleave, and caster comps like LSP. Even though you might get some hate for it, you can play double healer warrior. Honestly, any composition works, and it's only really select comps like RMP or Shatter where a paladin isn't the best option. Comparing other healers to Holy Paladin just really isn't fair, but nonetheless, there are still healers that excel with their own unique strengths. Our second healer recommendation is a great example of this, Disciplined Priest. Disc is considered the most offensive healer of the bunch, and as such, has abnormal levels of damage output, at least when coming from a healer. Evolving from TBC, all of Disc's base damage abilities hit a lot harder, and Holy Fire especially has a shorter cast time. But between Smite, Holy Fire, Mind Blast, and Shadow Word Death, you can contribute unrivaled levels of damage during your team's setups and is where Discipline thrives. To further play into this aggressive playstyle, Disc also provides instant crowd control to help in setups with Psychic Scream and also the ability to buff either yourself or your team members with Power Infusion. This is alongside being the only healer capable of dispelling both magic effects from your team and your enemies with the added bonus of removing two at a time, which no other healer can do. On the topic of dispels, priests in general have the ability to remove Divine Shield and Ice Block with Mass Dispel. Disc healing is also drastically improved in Wrath of the Lich King with the addition of their bread and butter spell, Penance. Penance is a short cooldown heal, which can be used either for a large amount of healing on an ally or damage an enemy. Alongside Penance, you've got the dynamic trio of Power Word Shield, Prayer of Mending, and Renew, which makes up for the bulk of your healing. Survivability is where discipline is limited though, as outside of pain suppression and to a lesser extent desperate prayer, they have no way to survive cleaves, and once things like warriors or death knights connect, it's only a matter of time until you fall over. This makes disc very limited with their composition options and heavily rely on their teammates to bring some form of peels or added survivability. In 2v2, your best partners are going to be rogues or mages, where you can coordinate bursts and rely on them for peels. This also translates into 3v3, where RMP is by far one of the strongest compositions available. That being said though, you're by no means limited to this, and RLP, LSP, Rhett Hunter, or even Double Healer Warrior are all more than viable options. 
In Season 5, Disciplined Priest is at their weakest, and with low resilience and health pools, will often just flop to Cleves if left unchecked. Discipline's strength does gradually improve throughout the seasons, even though Cleves still remain a very clear weakness. The additional offensive gear and MP5 allow them to greater play to their strengths, which is supporting their team with pressure. This leaves us at our third and final healer suggestion for this list, Restoration Druid. Going from TBC, Restoration Druid gets a few changes, giving them more of a focus on raw healing throughput. Most notably are the add-ons of Nourish and Wild Growth. The latter adds another strong instant heal over time to a Restoration Druid's kit, and alongside Life Bloom, Rejuve, and Swift Mend, allows you to effortlessly heal through damage without the need to cast in most matchups. It's in those times though where Nourish comes into play as it provides an answer to high periods of damage or spam purges. It's fair to say the main strength of a Restoration Druid is not only the healing that they're capable of doing, but it's the way that they do it which allows them to excel. As most of your healing is done passively and over time through your Blooms, Rejuve, and Wild Growth, this leaves you a lot of free time to play aggressively. This is done by utilizing Entangling Roots and Cyclone, which in Wrath doesn't share diminishing returns with any other effects and cannot be dispelled, making it one of the strongest crowd controls in the game. With that, it's how you maximize these two crowd controls, which will separate the good druids from the bad, as being proactive and using them both defensively and offensively is key to both your offensive and defensive play. Durability-wise, Druid is in a decent spot, due in part to the improved Bark Skin talent, which provides them with a huge passive boost to armor without the need to sit in bear form. Combining this with their mobility from travel form and natural ability to shift out of slows makes them a difficult target to stick on. If you're unable to kite or escape though, the only fallback cooldowns you have are Nature Swiftness and Bark Skin, which on top of reducing damage also provides you with purge protection. In the early stages of Wrath, healer mana is very important and can often be the deciding factor in a lot of matchups. Thanks to Innervate, Resto has one and a half mana bars to work with, which can often allow you to outlast in specific matchups. As a whole though, Restoration Druid is a healer that demands a certain level of skill to pilot, and is more than viable at the highest level. Resto makes the perfect healer for somebody who enjoys to play proactively and control the pace of the arena match. Season 5 is actually where Restoration Druid is at its strongest, and will no doubt have a very potent showing in certain compositions thanks to their high base healing output and mana efficiency, and they will be competitive with both Holy Paladins and Disciplined Priests. However, as Wrath progresses, Restoration Druid gradually gets weaker, and by Season 8 will have drastically fallen off. Due to not having a magic dispel, Resto is quite limited when it comes to comp options. In 2v2, the strongest compositions are with either a Destruction or Affliction Warlock, thanks to the abundance of synergy and magic dispel that they provide. But even then, you can still do well with either Warriors or Death Knights, and sometimes even Hunters. For 3v3 though, the standout comp throughout Wrath will be LSD, so playing with a Warrior and Elemental Shaman to gloss over some of Restoration Druid's weaknesses and allow them to play to their strengths. TSG, Mage Lock, and even Shadow Shadow Priest Mage are also some compositions that we expect to see played at the highest level. And with that, we conclude what we believe to be the best three melee, ranged, and healers to main for the release of Wrath of the Lich King Season 5. Remember, like we mentioned, this is purely based around just Season 5, and we'll be sure to keep this updated as we progress through the seasons. And it goes without saying, there are still plenty of specs and classes that we've not included, so if you didn't see the spec you intended to main on the list, don't let that deter you. Wrath as a whole in regards to class balance is in a great spot, and even what's deemed the weakest of the specs are still viable at the highest level. But no matter what class or expansion you decide to play, we got you covered at Skillcap with a rating gain guarantee for both classic and retail. There's no better time than now to sign up with a $6.99 monthly fee that gets you access to guides from Shadowlands, Wrath Classic, and eventually Dragonflight. Three games, one subscription, and over 400 rating guaranteed. Visit Skillcap.com to learn more. Hopefully at the very least these high level recommendations can help guide you toward a spec that you'll enjoy maining to start your Wrath of the Lich King journey. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.